Hey, this is Keenan Fry, and you're watching the Acid Drip. So, even though today is September 9th, this is technically day eight of the 29 day challenge. This is day eight because I haven't practiced yet and I haven't gone to sleep. I uh, obviously. <laughs> so, the way things are going to work, uh, I have my to do list of things, you know, and I went through a bunch of chores, errands today, and did my regular routine, my workout, um, 200 sit-ups or 200 push-ups, 300 sit-ups, ran two and a half miles, walked the dog today for another two and a half miles, it's like five miles total, um, you know, cleaned house and just did some regular maintenance stuff, uh, made a ceramic skull for my figure drawing course that took several hours. Holy Christ, that took a long time. And the skull isn't even finished. I've just cut like it to the basic proportions. I've cut it down to those like geometric ratio proportions. And then I'm, I'm going to bring it into my drawing class. And my, my teacher's going to kind of sculpt it for me and show me kind of like how to make that, that progress. So, um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, now... For the rest of my practice, though, I have to practice three hours today, guitar. Then I have to draw for three hours um, for the uh, album art for uh, uh, or, um, Jeff's project uh, with Aspen Way, the Flash Tower. Um, and then I got to do a few other, like, clean up around the house things and go to bed. So... If everything goes well, I will probably get done uh, with my guitar practice around 3.30. I think I might take like a 15-minute break somewhere in between. And then uh, I will immediately jump into drawing and get done with that around 7 a.m. Probably 7 a.m. And then I'll probably sleep until like... I don't know, 12, get another good five hours and then get up and start it over again. Um, that's kind of like my routine on the weekends. I really just push to get my grind on. Um, it's kind of like really exhausting, but you know, that's how it is. Uh, I did not practice yesterday. I really just focused on doing some digital art um, for another project that I'm working on. And I'm trying to like balance things a little bit. Um, while I took that day off yesterday, the callus actually went down. And then as I was working today, it reinflated, which means that it's still irritated. But the interesting thing is when I first had this like blister, uh, it was really thin and it would have popped very easily. And I had to be very careful with it. But because it went down for an entire day and it only came back up now after having it for three days, uh, I think it's going to go down again probably in another day or two and then become a permanent callus. So if you get one of these, don't pop it, okay? If you get a callus on your finger or if you want to get a callus on your finger like this, like this thing sucks, it's a pretty big blister. But if you want this to turn into a callus, uh, you have to, and I mean you have to, not pop it. And the reason behind that is simple. If you pop it and drain it, uh, the skin's going to stay thin and it's going to peel off. And then you're going to have even thinner, weaker skin underneath. But if you don't pop it and you leave it alone and you let it, you know, go down and it'll swell back up and then go back down and so on and so forth... Each time it goes down, the thin gets a, the skin gets a little thicker, and then even if it swells back up, that skin's a little bit thicker, and then it goes back down, and then it comes back up. Skin gets even more thicker, and then gradually it will just stay down, and you will have a fresh callus. It takes about a week and a half, about 10 days for that to happen, roughly 10 days. So you have to sit there and deal with it. For about 10 days, not quite two weeks. But if you pop it, it'll take close to a month to heal. And the skin will be thinner and it'll be harder to build that callus that you want. So, if you do get a blister, 
leave it alone. It's a pain in the ass and you know, you just have to deal with it, but it'll be better off in the long term. Um, final thoughts. Right now I am using OBS, I'm using Guitar Pro, and I'm uploading a video to YouTube that I started uploading around, God, I started uploading at like maybe 11 o'clock in the morning, like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's literally been going for 12 hours. I'm pretty sure someone is throttling my internet right now which is kind of pissing me off. I don't know why that's happening, but somebody is throttling my internet. Uh, I'm uploading to YouTube right now. It's got two hours and 16 minutes remaining. I don't want to cancel this upload because I know it's going to take a really long time to restart it. This is uh, what I'm uploading is day two and three of the challenge. And um, in one video, I kind of condensed them down because those were both short practices. But it's really frustrating that it's taking so long and um, because it is uploading while I'm running this video it's going to slow down my computer um, I don't know if there's going to be frame tearing if there is frame tearing in advance I apologize I have not started guitar pro yet so there shouldn't be any frame tearing right now but there might be some while guitar pro runs um, so if it looks a little glitchy I'm sorry also, I know it's like seven minutes into the video and now I'm actually like getting started playing. But, you know, I just felt like talking about my day for a minute. Um, yeah. All right. Let's start with Black Label and uh, jump into 11th Hour, Ruin, Redneck, Redneck Loops, then Redneck. And then if I feel like I can do it, I will try Detox. But if the sliding is up my hand then I will not do it also I have a few other um, Devin Townsend songs that I might glance at um, particularly love maybe all hail and maybe underneath but I, I, I want to glance at love um, just because I, I really like that song um, all right let's get started with black label oh wait Mess that up. Last one.
obviously very rough. Now it's going to change. Okay, this is where the change ups happen. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. <sighs> All right, rough, but I'm, I don't know, I'm holding it down. It's not perfect, but like, I'll get through the parts. Great. The chug. Four. All right, well, I can do that part. <laughs> All right, here we go. You know, I'm trying to do this thing where I'm changing the grip on my pick because uh, I'm struggling with the uh, chugga part The really fast chug apart because it's um it's uh it's just brutally fast and I'm like I feel like I'm grabbing the pick too tightly like so I'm I'm like fumbling because I'm trying to like switch up my picking and it's I'm just not sure how to really like approach this you know like if I need to like dig in and just like really fucking bend the shit out of the strings or if I need to loosen up my touch trying to find it and it's it's like slipping out of my hands whenever I try and change up position
I miss that rest. I gotta check something. Uh, I'm gonna slow it down to 45, and I am gonna check this. I'm doing some. I think I'm doing something wrong. This is uh, the wrong one. I need this one. This is the one I'm looking for. I want to add on this section.
Fuck. I'm distracted. That was rough. Yeah, I'm not taking my finger off. That was a little bit better. the second one. Ah, oh, Christ. Ah, take a break for a second.
That was garbage. Start over. It's distracted. That was a little rough. I totally fucked that up. That was a little bit better. Yes! Okay, I got a little excited, but that was the right way to do it. That was wrong. I got confused. That was right. That 
it was wrong. That works. Last one. Okay, here we go. Let's get this right. Okay, here we go. Here comes the next one. That was all right. That was right. All right, take a break for a second. <sighs> it's weird because I get this grogginess and I have to like focus through it, but I literally feel like there's this mental fog in my mind. It probably would help if I was getting more sleep, but um, I'm working with what I got. You know, I said I was gonna draw three hours after this, and like I may get only an hour in of drawing, but I, I am gonna draw tonight. I have to because I have to do work on Jeff's project. That's kind of what it's like though. I'm trying to balance, you know, music and art, and it's hard to do that and balance school and balance work and to try and like balance a personal life. There's not a lot of time, you know, for myself to just chill out. I gotta kinda like always be on one. And that's tough, but um, if I focus and stay disciplined, I think I can get there. So I missed practice yesterday. Yesterday was day eight. Spent my time working on a digital art piece, um, something for my album Clarity. So even though like I missed a day's worth of practice, I was still like working towards my goal of putting out Clarity. Um, and I'll probably start doing art updates on that project after I get done with Jeff's project. So I'm hoping to finish that up by the end of September. But if that's gonna happen, I really need to be putting in like, you know, 10, 12 hours a week into it, which is a lot of time. That means like four, three hour sessions, you know, each week. And I haven't really been doing that. I've been, you know, 
trying to balance a lot of things and you know something's gonna have to give and I think like I'm gonna have to just try to balance in a different manner so I'm gonna do a little bit more of black label and then I'm gonna run through it and try and speed it up and um, we'll see we'll see how far we get with it I'm gonna try and run through it two more times but uh, I'm actually going to speed it up to 60 BPM. I think I can do this at 60. And then from there, I'll go in and play the whole song at 60, then at 75, then at 90. And I'll see if I can get to 105 tonight and then back down to 90 again. We'll see if I get that far. But I am going to run through this a few more times. And then I'll start 11th Hour Ruin and then the loops for Redneck, then Redneck itself. And then again, I'll look at detox if I feel like I can do the slides without hurting my finger because I don't want to pop this. And if detox is going to be, if, if practicing detox is going to pop this, then it's better to let this not be popped and avoid detox um, for a few more days and just let that go. Um, but I'll look at maybe love instead if I don't do detox. That's kind of why I got the other Devin Townsend tabs open. Um, so yeah, let's bump this up to 60. I know that I don't quite have it perfect at this tempo, but it's really hard to concentrate when you're just grinding at 45 BPM. So I'm gonna switch it up and go a little bit faster, but you know, the actual tempo of the song is 90 BPM. So I'm still like way below, you know, tempo. So, you know, you, you want to practice the song at an extremely slow pace and then start speeding it up. Um, let's see how this goes. That was the best I've ever played it. That was great.
that was okay. Nice, that was all right. I did that like I think four or five times in a row. That was really good. Like that was solid. Um, yeah, that was probably the best I've played it. Sometimes speeding it up helps a little bit. It helps you refocus. Um, I'm gonna actually try speeding it up one more time. This is good. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, it's over. Let me try and do that four times in a row. I got distracted. Oh, I got totally distracted. So I need to like refocus. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? Okay, let's try again.
Yes! Oh, fuck. Mental fatigue. That was, like, those last ones were, like, dime. Like, fucking on it. Like, I was, like, just, like, in it for, like, a minute. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm going to try and go up to 90. It's, it's still not perfect, but I got to push myself if I'm going to get through it. And then um, I'm going to bring it all the way up to 105. Then I'm going to run through the whole thing at 75, 90, and then 105 again. I might try isolating uh, the section down here where there's this weird change up down here. I will probably try isolating this section next before running through the whole thing. So I've got, I got two more, I got one more section to isolate. I'm going to start that at, you know, however low I need to. If I have to start it at 45 again, I'll start it at 45 again. I don't really care where I have to start. I just, I got to just get through it. That's all that matters. So now we are at tempo, which is like fucking awesome. It feels good to be at tempo. And then we're going to go over it and that's going to be tough. And then we're going to go back down to it and then we'll switch. That was hard. Let's do that again.
Oh, I confused myself. I I started thinking about something else and I confused myself. Ah, fuck. It takes like a huge amount of like mental endurance to just be like, okay, I'm doing this. Like it's it's not that it's a hard song, it's that like the focus is hard. Like having the mental focus to do this is hard. That's really the difficult part. Like playing this isn't hard. Getting it up to tempo isn't hard. It's not hard to plug your amp in and like come up with a really good tone. What's hard is having the mental focus to do this like 10 times in a row accurately. Like I'm trying to get it in a row like four times, maybe five, but like I'm still a ways off from just having it like mechanically down. Um, but I'm gonna try and speed it up because I'm trying to push myself. And uh, you kind of have to be outside of your comfort zone to grow. And that's kind of what this is. So we're going over tempo. It's going to get choppier as I go up. Um, this is as high as I am going to go because going any higher doesn't serve a purpose. Um, so we're going to go to 105. Then we'll go back down to 90. And then we'll loop the next riff. And then we'll loop the whole song. And then we'll move on to the next song. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. I need to be able to loop it. I need to know when it's turning around. That was wrong. <laughs> getting it.
Ah, oh, that was choppy. I kind of like cheated. I slided through it. It was kind of cool to slide through it. Like, whoa, I slid through that, but it was wrong. But it was cool, but it was wrong. But it was cool. That was fucking cool. But uh, yeah, you know, that's 105. I think I'm done with that. I'm going to bring it down. I'm just, I'm kind of just wearing myself out at 105. I can feel it in my arm. So I'm going to bring it back down and we'll see how this feels. 105 is crazy. It's like really hard to like focus because uh, I can't relax. It's like really pushing me. It's like, fuck. Uh, so yeah, I'm like on the verge of going head over heels and just rolling down the hill and fucking up. It's like you either run down the hill and you don't stop and you're literally running head first because there's so much momentum behind you or you run down the hill and you trip over yourself and then you just roll all the way down and rolling sucks. You don't want to roll. You want to smoothly run down it. Even if you're running head first at breakneck speed, you want to just run with it. So 105 is scary. <laughs> Uh, let's let's bring it back down and chill out. That feels better, but I got distracted at the turnaround, but that feels a hell of a lot better. Like, it's not impossible now that I've pushed myself. So yeah, you go out of tempo and you go above. You're not looking to get it perfect. You're just trying to keep the rhythm as tight as possible. If you flub a note a little bit when you're going over tempo, that's okay. The goal is when you bring it back down, it should feel a little bit more relaxed. And that did feel a little bit more relaxed, but I need to like loop it. feels weird. Was I doing triplets? I think I was doing a triplet between the three. I fucked myself up there. I need to take a breather. Dude, it's already been an hour. Holy shit, it's already been an hour. That felt hella fast.
All right, I'm going to move on. I got other shit to do. Uh, okay, that's the breakdown, but I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for what comes after that. I am looking for this. So I want to go from the open to here. That gives me something to loop. Oh, fuck. This is uh, wrong tempo. Let's bring that down to, um, let's see how it goes at 60. There we go. Ah, oh, god damn it. That's Guitar Pro being weird. See, so that's what I'm talking about when it loops. See, it played this part once, and then it jumped back to here. And the reason why it did that is because I was only highlighted to here, and I hadn't highlighted the double dots. I really fucking hate that you have to go to the next bar to get the double dot repeat to play. It shouldn't do that. Like, if you go all the way to the end of the bar, and there's double dots, it should count those. It shouldn't just play it once. The fact that I have to add on that bar at the end is really annoying. It shouldn't do that. That is like a change that I would like to see in the program to improve it. That's something that would make it better. Guitar Pro, please fix that. Please. That would make it better for the users. Thank you. I love your program. I love your products. Please make it better. Thank you. I love that. <laughs> that was wrong. That was right. I struggle to talk while playing. It throws me off. It's like my brain can't do both at the same time. Oh, fuck. I, it's like my brain can't talk and play at the same time. It's really weird. It's like I haven't been able to get over that mental block. Like, if I want to talk and play, it's really fucking difficult. It, and I think the reason why is because, like, I haven't gotten to the point where, like, this is just muscle memory. Because when it is just muscle memory, then you can talk because, like, your present mind doesn't have to be focused on what you're doing but because I'm not there yet I can't talk and play that's why I can't sing and play like I, I can't because I don't have the muscle memory if I had the muscle memory down then I'd be able to sing to this or like for really simple strummy stuff like one of my goals next uh, challenge which will be in October uh, is to continue working on these songs a little bit so that I don't like let them drop off but I really want to work on um, like one of these challenges I want to work on a shitload of Hendrix and and John Fushante and like um, Stevie Ray Vaughan and um, fuck with the guy uh, Bradley Noel from uh, Sublime, because they're all like Hendrix style guitarists. Oh, and, and Mike McCready. Those are like the five, five Hendrix guitarists. Hendrix himself, Fushante, Stevie, Bradley Noel, and um, Mike McCready uh, from Pearl Jam. 
or is it Stone Gossard? I can't remember which one it is. There's like two guitarists in Pearl Jam. I don't know if it's Stone or if it's Mike, but one of them is like a ridiculous Hendrix fan. And um, like, I want to spend a month doing that, but like in order to do that successfully, I, I need to be listening to the music that I'm practicing. Like when I don't listen to the music I'm practicing, I'm not as invested in my practice. And right now, I'm listening to actually a lot of Modest Mouse. It's really weird. Like, I'm practicing this stuff because I'm really passionate. And I'm like, this is the first time I've ever tried doing something like this. And I'm like, really fucking driven to do this. I've been like, to be honest with you, like on and off working on these songs since last January. Like, really going almost on a year. Like what eight months nine months like mid-january i started working on these songs and it's like i and i know that it's a 29 day challenge and i don't want it to seem deceptive like oh i just picked up these songs and started playing like this like i've been working on this for a really long time i was actually trying to do a recording session with james in june or july and it just didn't really come together it was like easter which is what like april or may and um that was the last time i went into the studio with james and then we both just got really busy and fell out of contact it's not his fault not my fault but the summer went by and um actually it had to be before that it had to be april because i hadn't launched the llc yet so it had to be like march or april um, but it was like really close to Easter time when I stopped hanging out with James. Um, not because we had any problems. It was just, we just both got really busy and, uh, I was looking for a job and I was trying to launch the LLC and I just got caught up in all this other shit and it just didn't go forward like it was supposed to. So like, this is stuff I've been working on for months. It was supposed to happen a while ago. It hasn't. And I'm like really pushing for this so like i'm at the point though where i've listened to these songs so many times i'm fucking sick of listening to these songs like i'm really fucking sick of 11th hour i'm really fucking sick of ruin i still actually enjoy redneck because it's such a fun song redneck is probably the best lamb of god song like better than laid to rest for sure um redneck is like the best Lamb of God song. It really is their best song. Black Label is actually kind of fun. Um, it's a little bit repetitive, but it's just like, it's kind of like meditative when you get into it. Um, and I enjoy that aspect. Um, but I'd say my favorite Lamb of God songs, Redneck, Descending, definitely 11th Hour is up there. Definitely ruin, even though I'm kind of like tired of listening to them. I really do love those songs. Um, Walk With Me in Hell. I really like Sacrament. Like it took me a long time because at first I couldn't listen to Sacrament. I just wasn't, I wasn't into it. It was like just overproduced and it just sounded so loud and there was so much going on in it. I just didn't get into it. I liked their really raw like records like As the Palace is Burned. I really was into that for a long time in Black Label on New American Gospel. And then I, I don't know, something happened and I really started listening to Sacrament in like, because I started listening to Lamb of God in 2009, but I really didn't listen to Sacrament until like 2012 and then again in 2014. And then since 2014, I've been listening to that record. And it, it, it really took me like five years of listening to Lamb of God before I was like, yeah, Sacrament's their best record. Like Sacrament is their is probably their best record. But like, I really think that um, As the Palace is Burned is my favorite record because it's so raw. You can still really hear them playing and there isn't like a whole lot of studio magic. It's really just them playing. Ironically, that record has a lot of problems from like the there's a there's a documentary they did on the uh, reissue i think it's like the 15th anniversary of uh, as the palaces burn 
and they're remastering it and redoing it. And um, the whole band sits down and talks about it and what it was like to work with Devin Townsend as a producer. And I didn't even know Devin Townsend was the producer on that record until I saw that documentary. And then it was like the craziest thing ever. I thought that was really cool because I love Devin Townsend. And like, yeah, it's just a really fucking dense, loud motherfucking record. And yeah, I mean, that's all I can say about it. Um, I dig it. I like that record the most, though, because there's just so many just solid grooves on it. As Lamb of God got better, they like simplified their stuff and then they upped their production, which I think was a good choice because it made their them more commercial. And that's not a bad thing for a band like Lamb of God because like they're already obscure enough. So like bitching and moaning about Lamb of God becoming gradually more commercial is really stupid in my opinion because like those guys were from the underground and like anything they've got now they fucking earned. And I, I think anyone who bitches about them becoming commercial is just really just secretly jealous of their success. Those guys really worked for it. And like if in the process of like increasing their popularity, they like simplified their sound. I think that's a good thing. I think it shows like what the model is. Like you should try to simplify. Like one of the things I, I think is very interesting that is like a parallel to that in figure drawing, I'm doing uh, portraiture, which is drawing like the human face. And I, I don't think I'll ever really be like a great portrait artist. My goal is to really just learn proportion and just get into a closer ballpark of accuracy for human features to make my drawings more realistic. And then, you know, in time I'll get really good, but it will take time. But for my goal this semester is to really just get into that ballpark. And something that the teacher said that really stuck with me is that he said, with a lot of amateur artists, uh, their, their drawings, especially portraits, tend to grow. Which means that like their proportion system, they don't they don't fully understand the system because you know, you shouldn't be adding on. And when you do add on, you get weird proportions that are just out of ratio with each other. And he said, you know, with the more experienced artists, they actually like bring it in and make it tighter and their picture kind of shrinks. Like they start bigger and then it slowly shrinks to size, like heat shrink. Like you have a tube of heat shrink and you're sliding it over the wire. And then as you heat the shrink, it, it, it compresses to the form of the wire. It's exactly like that. Like as you draw, you erase and you, you cut away and you use the process of simplification and removal to bring it into form. Kind of like you're sculpting with clay and you're cutting away the excess clay. And, you know, Lamb of God did that. They, they simplified. But in the process, they increased their production because they had more money to spend on production. So... It's really interesting, like the stuff that got them in the studio and into the position that they were are now in was their phenomenal playing. And then what got them from that point where they were like an underground phenomenon to like a borderline mainstream band is the production. And that's why I really like Ashes of the Wake and or not Ashes of the Wake, excuse me, um, As the Palaces Burn because that was the album before Ashes when they started to go more of the production route. Ashes is really cool because it's still really complicated, but it's like the production's like huge. There's a huge difference in the production and it's like night and day difference. And like, you can really tell that like they went in with somebody who could do it. And that was Machine. And you can really like, you can really hear like the skill that Machine had and like the difference not to knock Devin Townsend like now Devin Townsend's probably one of the greatest producers around but like at the time he just didn't deliver a very good product he wasn't as good as machine but machine is like holy shit that guy's on another level he has like a really meticulous 
very, very, very mechanical process. He's a guy who enjoys production. Devin does production because it's part of the process and he has to be able to do it in order to create his work. Machine, his work is his production and that's what he loves and that's why he's so good at it. And so like it better served the Lamb of God to work with Machine instead of Devin and that makes sense. You really have to find the right guy for the job and you got to pay the right price to get that guy and that's what they did and Machine did Sacrament as well and Sacrament was the record that got nominated for a Grammy so it, it was like that that really shows like their progress. Like I said I like As the Palace is Burned from a playing standpoint from a production standpoint I think Sacrament is their best record and overall just their best release. But my personal favorite still is Ashes is As the Palace is Burned. I spent a lot of time listening to Ashes of the Wake. I really do enjoy Ashes of the Wake. And it is a really good record. And it it is it is a very good record, but it, it kind of blends together maybe a little too much. I don't know. I feel like there's more variation in Sacrament than there is in Ashes of the Wake. Like some of the songs on Ashes of the Wake, I think were like redundant of themselves, like Break You and and um, What I've Become and um, Now You've Got Something to Die For. I never really liked Now You've Got Something to Die For. That was like a big anthem song for them. I never really liked it. Um, I think Hourglass, Walk the Faded Line, Blood of the Scribe, and Omerta are probably the best songs on that record. Like Hourglass by and far being the best song on Ashes of the Wake. That's a song I want to fucking learn. I want to really fucking learn Hourglass. Like that's a song where like you play Hourglass and people are like, okay, that guy can fucking rip. It's hard to play Hourglass. That song doesn't have any repeats besides like a few little twiddly bits that appear at the end. But yeah, that song is is fucking difficult. It's just riff, 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 riff. You hear Hourglass and you're like, holy shit, this is like a tongue twister. So yeah, I, I really like Hourglass. All right, that was a good little break. I'm going to try it again. Last one. Then. <laughs> I think that transition's hella funny. Ah, fuck, I fucked that up. Let's try that again. I gotta get this up to 105. Fuck, I gotta get this to 105.
I can do it. There we go. There we go. I want to write a song with that transition. Something just really abrasive. That was bad. I think that's so funny. Yep. That was better. That was good. So it was rough actually, but whatever. was better <laughs> god damn
All right, I'm gonna speed it up. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna try and speed up. Let's see what happens. Fucking frustrated. Focus, come on, buddy, you can do this. Oh, <laughs> whoops. There we go. Miss that transition, but I can do it. All right, let's do this. Come on. That was rough. Let's see if we can get this one right, though. That was better. That was the best. Oh, whoops. At least I started right. It was a little rough. Almost there.
That was good. Ah, fuck that up. Last one. Okay. Let's try and do it twice in a row. Okay, I got this. Fuck, I psyched myself out. I psyched myself out. All right, let's try and get two in a row. That was good. One more. Okay, let's do it. We can do it. That's kind of rough. I'm not going to count that one. That was rough. Let's get two in a row. That was good. Let's do it one more time.
that one was a little rough too. Let's go. All right, I'm just tired. All right, um, fuck it, I'm gonna go up. That was pretty good. That was pretty fucking good. That was bad. Oh, fuck, I missed that. Oh, fuck. One, two. I gotta get better at counting. I can't fucking think. Oh my God, let's just do it. Fuck it, I'm done. I'm just going to do it. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. Oh, fuck. This is so bad. The grindy bit's gonna be really hard.
Oh shit, here we go. Oh my god, that was fucking fucked. Holy fuck, that was hard as fuck, dude. Holy Christ. Oh, Christ. I don't even know how I'm gonna do that. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. That was fucking hard. I couldn't hold that grind down. I'm going to put the song down to 60 BPM, which is going to be frustrating, but I'm going to try and do the whole thing at 60, and then I'll try and bump it to 75. But I'm not anywhere near 90. So there's like that grindy bit in the middle. It's like I can't fucking do that. Like I physically can't move my hand like that. It's going to take a long time to build up. If I can get it up to 75, what I would do is literally creep it up one BPM at a time. Literally 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 84, 84 86, 87, 89, 90, 90, all the way up to 105. I would literally build it up to 105. Like, if I want to play this song comfortably at one at 90, I need to be able to practice it at 105. You need to practice harder than you play. That's the idea. If I can play this above tempo, <laughs> 30 second notes at 105, holy flying fuck. Um, but yeah, if you, can, if you can play at a lower tempo than your practice, or if you can practice harder than you play, you're going to play well. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, I'm gonna do this three times at 60, 
once at 75 and then I'm moving on to the next song because it's been two fucking hours. I'm only supposed to play three hours tonight. I might end up going a little over that because I still have 11th Hour, Ruin, The Loops for Redneck, Redneck, and then a teeny bit of Love. So I still have like five things to fucking look at and it's been two fucking hours on one fucking song. <sighs> Red, dude, Black Label is going to sound good though. When I go into the studio, I'm probably going to cut this song first. If I can cut this song, then like even if the others are a little bit rough, I'll go into the other songs feeling better. If I can cut this song first on September 29th and I cut it like rock solid, like I fucking slay it, I'm going to feel good. I'm going to feel really fucking good. And the other songs will play better that way. I really think this is this is the lead. I'll probably do this and then immediately do um, 11th Hour because 11th Hour is probably the hardest song out of the bunch. And then after 11th Hour, I would probably do uh, Ruin, End on Redneck. And if I can do Detox, um, I might do Detox after Redneck. If I come off of Redneck into Detox, I think I might be able to nail Detox. Detox is probably just as hard as 11th hour just because it's so fucking grindy. So yeah, those are the goals. Let's get there. Three times. Here's the last one. I got confused there.
is a third one. I know this is a fourth one. See, I forgot what count I was on, and I tried to correct. I missed my cue, but I did okay, because I tried to catch it. string right string That was so bad. Oh, that was rough. That's okay. Two more times, speed it up once, and then let it go. Thanks for that. Still recording? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. Cool. Everything's still working fine. That's good. All right, here we go. Final chug. loop number two. Three. This part is painfully slow, but even here it feels like slamming four Fuck. I should not fuck this up. This is the easiest part. I'm feeling it in my arm. I'm gonna take a break from Black Label. I have worked like plenty hard on this song. I know I wanted to play it a few more times, but I need to hit other songs, and I can't hit those songs if I feel like shit. I'm gonna try this, and we'll see where we get from here. Oh, 
Whoa, oh, these are the loops. That was the sixth one. Seven. Yep, there's eight. Oh, shit. I'm totally off. I got hella lucky. This is the third one. I'm done for tonight. I want to do more. It's been two hours and 12 minutes, but I don't think I have the energy to do this. I feel myself crashing like really hard, like really, really hard. I'm crashing. Um, and like staying up and drinking coffee and trying to push through this isn't going to work. So I either need to go to bed or pointlessly grind through this. I think it's time to go to bed. I'm not going to get any art done. That kind of sucks. Means I'm going to have to do that tomorrow. I spent way too much time on Black Label. But like, ironically, it's not way too much because that's just the amount of time it takes to get a song like that down. And like, I'm not putting in enough time to do all these songs. And it's tough, but like, I don't know how I'm going to get these up in time for September. So what will probably happen is I will go in September 29th and do my best. And then I'll go in again and try these songs again a month later. You know, maybe it's a 29 day challenge for September, but that doesn't mean like I, I can't play these songs or practice these songs afterwards. Like honestly, September 29th is really just a day I set for myself to try and push myself and to try and like see what I could achieve. And also like people have always told me that the most important thing you can do when you practice is to keep track of what you practice and how much you practice and how well you practice. And I've always shirked the responsibility of keeping a practice log or a practice journal. And it's because I always felt like it was kind of pointless. But now that I'm doing these videos and it's like, you know, I'm trying to play like every single day. Like I am really trying to play every single day and it is fucking hard to do that. Let alone like play all these songs every single day. These are really fucking intense songs. And it's like I am really trying to grind through these songs and learn all their parts. It's really hard. And it's like. I'm tired, but I feel good about the work I'm doing. I will get where I get 
when it comes to September 29th. Like, I'll do what I can do. And then when it's all said and done, you know, wherever the dust settles, that's cool. Because it's just a progress report. This isn't the end all be all. This isn't the last recording session I'll do. So I'll go in, do my best, and then maybe in like early November I go back. Like I don't think I would have time in October to go back in, but maybe like the very first weekend of November I book time with James again and I do like another month long challenge. And then the very last or the very first weekend of November I go in and I do like an October challenge. And then in November I go in and then I can try again and, you know, maybe the very first weekend of December I go in again. Or maybe the last weekend of November I go in. Well, the last weekend is Thanksgiving and I don't want to do that. So maybe I go in again in December, like first weekend of December or something like that. And then, you know, take time off until like February. Not like from practicing, but just be like, hey, let's go in end of February and, you know, give myself December and January to figure out where I'm going to take this and then go in in January with a new plan, you know, cause like February, February is six months out basically. Cause today or right now it's September. So September to October, October to November, November to December, December to January, January to February. So it's five months out. Excuse me. What am I saying? It's five months out. So like, where will I be in five months? I, I will, okay, in five months I will pay off all my credit cards for the LLC and I will be printing new posters and really pushing to sell them. And that's probably one of the things I'm going to be really focused on between December and January. And I'll still be practicing around that time. I should be done with a lot of projects by then, which is a good feeling. It will feel good to, to be around February. And I will be looking to start new stuff. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on, Guinness. Come here. You want attention. You, you just feel like lonely. Come here, come here. Guinness, Guinness, Guinness. Come on. You want to go outside? I think he's got to go to the bathroom. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. January, February, we'll see where things are going. I'm going to bed. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Best of wishes to you all.